Tune in for Patrick Ching's Painting in Paradise. Aloha, I'm Patrick Ching, and thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. In this episode, we'll learn about painting with a knife, a palette knife that is. We'll get to know the art of it. Michael Powell, a prolific painter who learned from the late great knife painting master Hiroshi Tagami. I'll show you how I painted Makapu Sunrise, and we'll see new knife painters creating amazing art. Enjoy all this and more on a cutting edge episode of Painting in Paradise! <laughs> With galleries throughout the Hawaiian Islands, Martin and MacArthur sells lots of paintings. I asked Michael Tam, the owner of Martin MacArthur, why people like knife painting so much. Palette knife painting is a fascinating style for painting because what the artist does, they don't use a brush, but they actually use a very sharp edge knife. What you can do is you can have a lot of different depth and textures, and you can also use it to smooth out the paint. And so it makes it a very smooth, but very blended look that you wouldn't necessarily see with a brush. It's amazing when people come into our store, they're attracted to this technique of knife painting because not a lot of artists do it. And when they learn about it, they become fans. They become appreciative of what goes into palette knife painting. When we return, we'll get to know one of Hawaii's premier knife painting artists, Mr. Michael Powell. The first time I met Michael Powell, I was mesmerized by the vibrant mountain ridges and valleys brought to life with oil paint that the artist supplied with a knife. I could definitely see the influence of Michael's mentor, the renowned palette knife painter Hiroshi Tagami. I also noticed how folks really love Michael as a person. His love for nature and humanity was apparent to everyone around him. When I heard that Michael Powell was having a show with my friends Frank B. Shaner and Ricky Guild at Martin MacArthur's store in Wailea, Maui, I zipped over to get some of their thoughts before the show. First, I spoke with Martin and MacArthur's owner, Michael Tam, who flew up for the show as well. Martin MacArthur is a gallery of fine craftsmen, and this is in the shops of Wailea. We're proud of this store because it's a flagship. It's over 4,000 square feet, and it represents over 100 artists and craftsmen. We're proud to have three artists tonight, each of these artists has a different style, Michael Powell, Frank B. Shaner, and Ricky Gill. And we're happy to be sharing that with our clients because it reflects their lifestyle and what their appreciation and love for Maui is all about. Well, this is the first time I've been invited into uh, Martin MacArthur. I'm so excited. It's paint and, and stuff. And that's pretty much what it is, you know. And I love the art uh, as far as the musical instruments. And uh, I listen to... Uh, Oscar Peterson. This is, the, this is Oscar Peterson stuff right here. <laughs> well, my art journey is I think I've been drawing since I could walk. And uh, I've always loved doing art. I grew up in a, a family full of artists. In college, I loved printmaking. And back then, you had to use a press. But I found a new way, a new medium of making these and they're called monotypes, which is a printmaking process, but these are all one of a kind. So I have always been fascinated by the Hawaiian crow. It's an endangered species in Hawaii. They're beginning to release them into the wild now. They've been propagating them up in Olinda, and now they're going to reintroduce them into the forest. So this is my introduction of the alala into the forest. And of course, there are the beautiful knife paintings of the prolific artist Michael Powell. I lived on Maui for a long time up in Kula and Keokea, one of my favorite places in the world. And so whenever I paint Maui, I'm painting memories from my heart. It was just a magical, magical time in my life. After that show, I visited Michael in his art studio in Honolulu. Aloha, I'm Michael Powell. Welcome to my studio. 
When I was uh, very young, I loved art, and I used to create paintings and do my own thing. And then in my 20s, I came to Hawaii on a business trip, and I saw Hiroshi Tagami, and although I had met him when I was a little boy and he was a friend of my family, I never thought of pursuing art. And then he said to me, Michael, your parents have been very good friends to me, and I really like you, so I would like to teach you art and how to paint so that you don't have to buy. You can just create your own. And that began a lifelong partnership and friendship between Hiroshi and me. So I was working for the Bank of Hawaii, and after three years, Dick Hart, who was his partner in art and in business, passed away from liver cancer. And Hiroshi said to me, Michael, I don't know anything about business. I've never had to do it. So I would like you to come and help me and take one year, and I'll teach you to paint, and you can work on my business, and we'll see how it goes. So after one year, I had my first art show, and I was very, very nervous. And I did 19 paintings for this event. And I had to hang my paintings next to Hiroshi's, and that was intimidating. But the show went really, really well. And on the first day, I sold 17 of my 19 paintings. I was thrilled. And he said, clearly, you're meant to be an artist. And that changed my life. Not just because we were creating artwork, but Hiroshi taught me how to use our art to raise money for charities and to help people. And I continue to do that to this day. Then Michael told me about a major health challenge that changed his art and life for good. I think that in life we're often presented with adversity. But if we look at it through a different lens, it often presents to us a gift that's at first cloaked or hidden by the trauma of what we go through. This happened to me. So I wouldn't say that having open heart surgery and severe heart failure is something anybody should wish for, but in my case, it gave me a wonderful gift after I healed. And people that know my art well have come up to me and asked me what happened. They see a difference. Um, it's richer and more free. You can do so much with a palette knife. You can make thin swipes of color and light. You loosely mix things, and so when you apply the paint, you have nuances of different colors showing through. It's really a wonderful tool and it can be very fast as well. The key is you have to put feeling into your work. And this palette knife helps me do that so effectively. The lesson that I learned from Hiroshi and by doing this work, everyone should paint what they love to paint. They should allow their feelings to come forth onto the canvas and they should not try to create something that is not within them. So whatever we do is a reflection of who we are. In my case, almost all of my paintings have an ethereal feeling because that's who I am. And Hiroshi said to me, don't deviate from that. Just paint who you are and your paintings are ethereal. That's your gift. And that's all you should focus on. And that's what I do. So I am eternally grateful to Hiroshi for teaching me this technique. It is just a wonderful thing that has added so much to my career. I love to paint scenes like this because you can be very loose and very free. So to create water, just the way it flows so freely over everything, just doing that is really something I, I so much enjoy. And you can make your paint as thin as you wish by pulling it tightly like this. And then as you come forward, you build up texture. So this is how you do it. When we return, We'll see how some new knife painters created their first knife paintings in just a few hours. I recently held a one-day palette knife painting workshop 
at She Brews Aloha Yoga and Art Studio in Coca Marina Center. With its charming studio and beautiful location, this is a great place to hold and take art classes. Before the workshop, I prime the canvases with a mixture of gesso and acrylic paint. I do this because it helps to set the tone for the painting, and if the artists leave any spots unpainted, they're not showing the bright white of the canvas. I choose this brick red color sometimes because I like the way it contrasts with most of the colors that the painters use. In a few hours, they'll have some finished paintings. But before you finish any job, first, you gotta start. Today I discovered a rainbow While walking along by the sea We walked all the way to These the artists have painted before, but most of them have not tried it with a knife. Janice starts with a background ocean color. Lucinda places her colors right where she wants them. Cynthia mixed up some soft pastel sunset colors. Teeny's not afraid of a little paint. <laughs> but you know, the viewer loves to see bravery. That's what's impressive to them. Colors colliding. That's why people are just going to love these paintings at the end of today. You're gonna have such a gorgeous painting that's gonna last your whole lifetime, whether you give it to somebody or what. I really appreciate positive speech in the classroom, especially because these paintings can be really hard, but it's your words that are your truth, so you can choose to say anything you want. Might as well make it positive. Sometimes, when I see a good opportunity for teaching, I'll commandeer one of my students' paintings and demonstrate with it. Deliberately add the direction of the spray of the waves, okay? With every stroke here, yeah, you could mess it up, ruin it, whatever. But the main thing is, <laughs> it's not my painting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I'm gonna just massage it in there and Amazing. make it disappear massage. against the wet color of the background. Wow. And then I'll give the student back the knife and watch that wet paint flow. There. Okay. After a while, the students are rewarded by the sight of their paintings taking shape. some more of it right here okay? okay now Lena's putting in one of my favorite colors that aqua sand bottom color that makes you feel so good like Lucinda finishes okay. off with the highlights of the wave foam wow. Keith yeah. took his painting home so he could finish it up when the paint was dry and easier to handle Looks like you're finished, Keith, but wait, where's your smile? What? Something's missing? Ah, there's the blowhole. And there's your smile. In fact, I like to measure the success of an art class by the smiles per hour. When we return, you'll see the sculpting of a painting called Makapu Sunrise. And now I'll show you how I painted this Makapu Sunrise with a knife. 
the inspiration came from one of my early morning visits to this beautiful bay. First, I mixed the colors that I thought I would need for the sky. Then I started applying the paint with a palette knife, with the lightest colors first. Sunrises can be challenging because you're painting with colors that clash, but that's what makes them so exciting. After I did the faraway cliffs of Makapu'u, I began putting in the ocean. I put the deep dark colors in first, then I lay the reflections from the sky on top of that. Occasionally, I use a brush if I want a soft blended area. After I put the waves in the sand, I lay in the dark foreground of the rocks. And then the bushes. The kupuna and the keiki come and lay a kayona at the gentle breeze. I use the tip of the knife to get the delicate edges of the shrubs. Finally, I add the medium and lighter greens to the foreground. Doing a painting with thick wet paint can be risky, and your viewers know this. But that adds to the appreciation folks have of knife paintings. The raised edges and the shadows of the paint add a third dimension to the art where in effect, the artist is actually sculpting with paint. Now let's revisit our 2023 Artist Retreat Palette Knife Session in Waimanalo. We've got to start getting used to the skill of laying one color on top of another wet color without digging up the first one. Look at how she mixes. That's a person that knows how to mix with a palette knife. Okay, the paint is on the bottom front of the palette knife, not on the back, bottom, and not on the top. And just come at it from different angles. Take that pile and chook, chook, chook. You see, I'm hitting it at a different angle. Chook, chook. All right. You want to paint some clouds in there? Yeah. You, you want to use a brush or a palette knife? Okay. Good. Okay. Good. I'll try a brush. As you can see, palette knife painting is not always easy, but it is very rewarding. I usually do landscapes with oil and brushes, so this was very difficult or different for me. Because I'm used to doing an airbrush, which is so simple and you got it already, but this you have to layer and all these different little things that, that you have to think about. And, so it was very uh, challenging. It's a mostly palette knife painting of Wailua Falls. The palette knife is a new thing. Yeah. And so it was, how do I hold this? How do I get the effects yes. that I'm trying to achieve? I think the palette's a lot more challenging, but I like the look and I want to learn to do it better. <laughs> Well, I've been really trying to work hard on getting capturing the um, essence of the wave and the barrel, and I am super excited with the way it turned out. So, thanks to Patrick um, and a lot of help. <laughs> Painting in Paradise! Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. I hope you enjoyed this episode on palette knife painting. If you'd like to learn how to paint your own pictures, you can go to patrickchingart.com. Just imagine what you could create with paint. Aloha!
For art, gifts, and lessons, visit patrickching.com. <laughs>